My name's Matt, welcome back to the shop, and this is another, um, what is it, I just want to do one after the other, I've got some time to kill, Mrs is busy, I'm sat in here, let's just get on with it. So, a much requested simple skills video on using the ubiquitous 4 inch, that's what it says. <laughs> Isn't this the day after? Or was that July? I can't remember. This has only got 13,000 views. Mm. Only 13,000 idiots have seen this. Well, there's about to be some more. This is the four inch grinder, let's go. She literally does not look, sorry, right, but she does not look entertained. Now, I know a lot of people say, you got to leave the missus out of it, which I do, but she's in this video, and I talk about things that are in the video. Talk about disinterested. Cold. Not interested, and look how the demeanour just changes. They were right chit chatty, and they put this camera up there on intentionally. It was like a fly on the wall thing. What a failure! Yeah, welcome back. Okay, now the other day I gave you a little insight into what you do with this. Is... I've just got to check something. Yeah, I'm good. Let's go. Simple skills on the four inch grinder. Now the venerable four inch grinder, as you can see, one of these is a tool that I use on just about every single fabrication video. And quite a lot of you have asked for a simple skills on it to see how to use it, what it's about, You've what it does, safety, safety tips, tips and- Are you fucking shitting me? Let's, this, this. And so you know a little bit more about it and maybe you, in your own way, can use one safely without hurting yourself. So that bit right, okay? Mm -hmm. Okay, welcome back to the Always Garage. Let's get going. Immediately, first shot, using a grinder like a... T <laughs> there isn't even words. Like a, 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 a cunt twat. A quat or a t twunt. You know what? <laughs> twat and cunt are two words. They just don't, they're, that's why they are separate individual words, because... Another word can't do it justice. Okay, four inch grinder. Um, it's kind of, if you like, you could say it's related to the electric drill family. You've got a motor wow. inside this. Spins just an electric grip, just like an electric drill. Instead of having a chuck coming out the end with a drill bit in the end, what you've got instead is a 90 degree gearbox and transfers the drive. No, call it a it's just a gear set, but whatever. At the end of the tool, and it's got this spline in the center. So I'm going to take the blade it's out. A spline in the center. It's talking shit already. We are literally fucking 30 seconds into this bit. Show you. <laughs> Bit of poo came out then. Here we are. That's the basic central spinning shaft. Simply got a bevel gear in the end. So you've got a big electric motor inside there, big powerful, chunky electric motor that's got loads of grunt. That spins, turns that 90 degrees, and then you've got all the power coming out the end. You've got all the power coming out. out the end. <laughs> shit camera, shit frame rate, internet connection. Or switch off the power anytime you're playing with this that's, end of it. So just have a quick look at this. Um, this is a Bosch grinder. I've used cheap ones in the past. They're just rubbish. They just fall to bits. They don't last very long. The electric motors burn out quite quickly because you do lean on them. You put a lot of work on them. But this one, I've had this for about five years, this German Bosch version, and it has never let me down. I'm not endorsing it. Other products are available. But this one is a really good one. It's about 50 Why wouldn't you endorse it? Isn't that what endorsement is? 
you know what I mean? You kind of are endorsing it, but then saying that you're not. So we're all confused now. If something's good, something's good. Something shit, I'll say it. <laughs> for what it is. You can get them cheaper, and there are better ones. You can get Hilti and that sort of thing, but how much you spend on it depends on how much you can afford. Like all, things. all right, so what we've got in this here, I want to show you this. We'll just strip this a little bit further till we get right back to the bare tool. There's a little handle in there. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. A little handle. Turn that. Can you come in close? There's a little lever in there that releases. They're all different. This Guard. And when you turn the guard round, it lifts off because you've obviously got these patterned teeth that follow a pattern on the spline. So that body now, that is completely naked. And all I'm going to do with that, as you should do with these periodically, is sweep the dust and all the crap off. No, the about once a year, you take the head off. So you take this head off and you grease the fucker up. Clean. All right, now it must be said, and I absolutely positively have to say this, you will see people using these without their guard on. I cannot stress enough, never take the guard off your grinder, ever, for any reason. People are doing it, honestly, they're just being fly. That's just their choice, they choose to take such a risk, and it can do a nasty injury. The reason is... That Putting your vice in a fucking, uh, putting your vice in a grinder. Yeah, fuck it. Putting your vice in a grinder where it doesn't belong. <laughs> these discs, I'll show you these examples of some discs here. These discs are made for the job. Let's just get that to a little bit. These discs are made for the job. What a ridiculous, redundant, I'm going to move this a minute. What a ridiculous, redundant thing to say. Stop wobbling, you fucker. What a ridiculous, redundant thing to say. And there's four different examples of discs. That's a thick, four or five mil thick grinding disc for grinding heavy lumps of metal and taking off quite a lot of metal. And not really for cutting, that's just for grinding. Yeah, really that's a by the way. thinner disc, that's a three mil cutting disc. You can get them thinner than... You did the same fucking thing. That, that's a diamond edged steel disc. You can cut everything with that from steel to mm, concrete. You can, but I wouldn't. To just about anything, just about anything a diamond disc will cut, but they're quite noisy and they yeah, get very hot. Yeah, steel and you shouldn't be. And that is a flat disc. You might have heard of these. What that is is basically a load of little sheets. If you look close, it's a load of little sheets of sandpaper. They're all glued into place like little layers, you can see in the edge. Little layers of sandpaper. This particular one's an 80 grit, so that's quite tough. tough. And that spins... The, the grit has got nothing to do with how tough it is. At such a rate, that will grind metal away. That will sand it down faster than you can. It, it will, just... not compared to the fucking grinding discs. Reassemble this, quick as we can. Put the guard on first, so you're right down to the bare grinder itself. Put the guard on. You can see this little handle in the back just comes in and it, it locks in the teeth. So how yours works, you might have a different system. I don't know, but that comes in. And if you can see, can you see the little three teeth? Mm, just. Is they come in, see them? Popping in? Yeah. So that has, what, four positions. One, two, three, four. That when you're grinding something, the idea of this guard is that as the sparks fly off, they don't come back at you. Because obviously they are multiple pieces. Not really, no. What happens is it's the interface. So you have your substrate and you have your disc. And the moment the sparks can get out due to abrasion is where they fly out. Some travel around the disc and spit off, but the sparks stop being such a fucking pussy. <laughs> metal. And they'll come at you and they'll burn and they'll blind and they'll just nasty injuries. shield on or some goggles or any other kind of protection, you complete fucking tool. And of course the other side of it is, if that flares off into something soft or a cloth or something, it can set fire to it. So be careful, the guard is very, what? very important. Make no, sure it's... the guard is there for two reasons. One, so you don't fucking stick your hand in it. Look, it's stopping your hand getting at the spinny bit right this second. Number two is, is if a disc does explode, it doesn't pep you like a fucking claymore. <laughs> Who would have thought Probably it's that pain. difficult to understand? <laughs> Okay. I'm going to stick mine just a bit further around, like that. Now then, 
you've got this, which is the little block on the back. The shaft itself has got two shoulders. Huh? All right, and you've got the two shoulders in that block oh. there. So that goes okay. on and locates on the two shoulders. And that means that that will turn with the blade. So you turn this flat plate. Purpose of this flat plate is because that's rough like that, is it? We use, uh, we use the kind disc. It grabs the back of it, it rubs against the back of there. As you put that on there, it gives it a rough surface to grip it. That's all it is, it's just a grip. And you've got this, which is the collar that you screw on the front. Screw See, it's the collar dished, on. Del. It's dished for a reason. That's for this surface. Wow. Look, this is why it's, it's using it wrong. That's why it's abraded like this. That's why it's all fucking exposed like this. And it hasn't worn away. You're just basically now rubbing fibres on things. Okay, now. Spin it on, and that holds it together. All it is, it's squeezed. There's no locating splines on these discs. It's splines? He only talks about his splines. Screw that in, and then as you can see, you've got these two holes. Can you come in? You've got two little holes there, and you've got one of these spanners. They come in the kit when you buy it, they come with your tool. And all you do is locate those in there, and that allows you to turn it by hand. So that's obviously going to keep turning. So on the back of all grinders, you've got a big red button that locks it. So you press that in, and as you press that, it actually, where are we? There it is. It locks the blade. So you can get the spanner in there. It locks the blade. Number two is for fucking little 115 grinders like that, you can just tighten it by hand. And tighten it then that is nice and tightly done up. And obviously the way it turns, it does itself up as it turns anyway, so it shouldn't come off, but do make sure it's properly done up. Now, at this point, you're ready to cut, you're ready to use that for cutting things. You'll notice there's a couple of threads on each side, and those threads are where a handle goes, like a side handle, so you can fit a handle in there, handle in there, and you can use it with a handle. But when I use my grinder, I'm always holding the job itself. So when I had the screen the other day and I was cutting that, I'm holding the screen with one hand, I'm grinding with the other, so I haven't got any reason for the handle and it gets in the way. So it is detachable, you don't have to have it on there, but it's just there for use. It's in the That's box because there. you're so a retard, you should not be holding stuff. Ideally, if you can get away with it, don't be holding stuff. There's that thing there, look, you know you usually use to hold the grinder. <laughs> what a prick. What I'm going to do with this now, at this point we're ready to cut some stuff, so I'm going to show you what it can basically do. But if we want to do that, the most important thing when using a grinder of any kind, any form of spinning tool, spinning wheels, whatever, put it in the vice. Use protection, PPE, use your protection. I'll give these to you, Penny. Mm -hmm. You can stick those on. Wobble, wobble camera. You nice. Look fantastic. You look lovely. Very fetching. <laughs> there we go. Right. And sleaze. All the time. So what I'm going to do is stick some stuff in the in the vice. Just pop that in there. That is two mil thick. What? Are we having a moment right now? Do I need to take my pants off? Fuck. Sheet metal. And we'll just show you how quickly it literally just slices like straight through it. Switch you on. There's always a little. When you twitch these on, they always twitch. There's quite a little. If I just hold it gently. Talk, believe it or not. You'll see it twitch that way as it goes on. <laughs> it's caused by the motor. As the motor launches instantly, obviously there's a twisting rotation that way as you switch it on. So be conscious of that. When you fight. Opposite. You know, equal and opposite actions. Like a helicopter, Dell. Oh. Grinder, you'll notice there's quite a little buck to it, like a centrif uh, gyroscopic effect. No. And that's something that you, no. No. you will feel and you'll get used to handling as time goes it. off. So. You'll feel it. Look what this hand's doing. Oh, this hand is left handed, so look what this hand's doing. You could use that hand to do something with. I don't know. No idea. What a fucking job that was. You know what, I see people all over the place 
uh, loads of places I've worked, stuff like that. Some people are so brutal with angle grinders, especially cutting discs. They just go, and you can see the puffs of that dirty smoke and the, uh, dust. Really, and that's basically the disc just fucking disintegrating because you're just going way too hard with it. Just fucking let the grinder do the work. As you can see, straight away there, that took about two seconds, literally, wow, to just slice. We need to get it done really quick. Straight through that piece of two mil steel. Um, if you use something thicker, let's use this little bit of practice world metal. There you go. Can we see the world? This is uh, three mil thick angle iron. Um, change the disc. Put a bigger one in. As the discs wear, these are known as erosion discs, which means that as time. Just an idiot, right? This is it. I'm, I'm going to have to stop doing videos on Dell because we are literally taking the piss out of someone who has learning difficulties and that is unfair. Fucking what? I want, I want the subtitles up. Do the subtitles. Change the disc. Put a bigger one in. As the discs wear, these are known as erosion discs. Which Even mean... the automatic captions for YouTube has seen that that's erosion, right? It's erosion discs. Oh, air, wind, water. Means that as time goes on, you erode the... No, what is it? Is it... No. Ah! Is it... Uh, no. Earth, wind and water. Air, wind and water. Same thing, knobhead. But, you know, I think I need to go back to primary school. Edge of the disc away, where it also erodes through the metal. It erodes. And they wear out. They get smaller as time goes on. So <laughs> I just love that idea. I'm sorry, I'm nitpicking sentences here. It's great. They just get smaller as time goes on. Do you know what? I thought I had some six-inch discs in this box. I've come back two years later, and the three-inch, the motherfuckers, they've just eroded away. <sighs> That's a bigger one. That bigger one. Isn't it? Mm. Are just you can get different thicknesses a one millimeter erosion disc very very thin Sorry, we're just gonna have to what does youtube have to say you can get different thicknesses a one millimeter erosion disc yeah, very very thin it's a southern thing but no it says erosion super thin that will slice through even quicker but there's a three mil oh, one you got that's a piece of angle line i'll show you what i mean again again how you cut things like this. <laughs> Fucking prick. Oh. Wow. Yeah, what do you think? <laughs> so as you can see, look, it is a pretty lethal tool. It's just gone through that piece of angle line in about five seconds. So it's extremely powerful and extremely efficient tool. But that means naturally, like anything, like a powerful weapon, for instance, it needs respect. It really does. I'll show you something else it can do. Just stick, if you change just the blade, device, you should see what it can do. It's amazing. Like if you're cutting... Good old flat fist. This is one of the most... This is one of the most common times I'll use these. Uh, oh, yeah, when you have round wood. things and you want to put loads of faceted flats in it that are random. <laughs> we know. The flat disc, and if you have, um, what's going on? Plugging it for? Find a nasty little bit of bird metal. Here we go. We take a look at that. That's a little piece of bird steel. As we've cut it with the grinder, it's made this really nasty. Yeah, but that's four or using five the grinding disc as a cutting disc, and that's because you went through it at the speed of light. If you go through it with a bit more finesse, it's not nowhere near that bad mil or whatever it is size 
eighth of an inch of, of metal so just using bent the right over. Tools for the right job. You get a one mil slitting disc. Just gradually go through it like that, and then lovely, we're through it, and then you get your flat. Oh, there's fuck all there, really. Most of the time, you get some pliers, just fucking wiggle it off, and then you get yeah, done. I've turned into a razor edge. So to slide that off there, again, just put flat disc in. This is this is fundamentally a massive file. It's like a big piece of well, sand. Is it a file or is it a sandpaper? because they are fundamentally two massively different things. One is a high carbon steel hardened rod, either rectangular, triangular, circle, square, you fucking name it, with a tooth profile that cuts one way and not the other. The other is a piece of cloth with titanium dioxide, uh, titanium, uh, titanium dioxide, aluminium oxide, zirconia, you name it, whatever, glue to the surface which is completely different which cuts in you know unidirectional what the fuck are you talking about <laughs> the same thing can you get in close on that with the, with that zoom one zoom. is okay. the second option basically little sanding pads zoom in on close and you'll see what i mean it'll take that edge off in a second yeah. it's all about time oh look it's turn it on again after you've unplugged it and fuck i get in Amazing. When was this set up? Twenty sixteen. I absolutely love this series, Dell. Keep up the good work. Nice to finally get a video on this. As a younger viewer, I can say a lot of it is basics and logical, but good to have someone clarify everything, especially on the health and safety of of you kidding me, you poor cunt. I hope that guy's not dead. Right, just got to add some din-dins, some fucking them extra double spicy ramen noodles. Fuck me, I'm still getting used to them. Where were we? Again, in a second or two, it just files through it. So you can see that as we're going along here, the four inch grinder is incredibly robust. What I've done, what many of you no, see me do, versatile. as well, is this old trick. What I'll often do is use it in the vise. Pop it in the vise, just gently, and now you can't grip it because it's got a plastic case. All I can do is just pop it in and that, that isn't going anywhere. That's now firmly mounted. Now the grinder cover... I, I didn't know he told people to do this. Wow. <laughs> you can use a little handle if I need to. I can move that round so I've got access to this. There's an arrow on the back of the machine which shows you which way it rotates, so it rotates that way. So I can use this surface here for cleaning, planishing, filing, dressing stuff off. So I'll show you that. He is actually showing people how to do this. Oh God. Oh. <laughs> Mind you, it's the safest way. Mm. I'm going to put a glove on. No, I'm not. No. I'm going to put it in a pair of pliers. I'm Even going to talk pain about <laughs> Gloves in a minute, uh, just briefly. Just for my safety, so it doesn't tear this out of my hand. I'm just going to use a pair of locking pliers. All right, switch on. Mm -hmm. almost like someone got this concept of a motor and a wheel and stuff and it's almost like they put it in a bench mountable thing it'd be like a it'd be an angle grinder but you can't use it at angles 
not an angle. It wouldn't be multiple angles. It would be a grinder for be bench grinder. There we are again. That has made a lovely job of smoothing that off just in a few seconds. It's an amazing labour saving tool, a four inch grinder. You can do so much with it. Now, whether it's right and proper, whether the health and safety executive would advocate putting your four inch grinder in your vice, I don't know. It's a choice you have to make. I do it. You see, no, you do it. no, no, no. You're right. So, you're on a platform where people will view your stuff like this randomly. You have a duty to at least... You do. People might say, well, legally you don't. Actually, legally I don't know where you stand, actually. I don't know where. If a manufacturer told you to do something dangerous, then they are liable. So I don't understand why that was any different. I've done it for many, many years and I've never had a problem. I always make sure it is firmly and securely secured in the vice and it doesn't well, yeah, move. I've literally showed people videos of it moving. Of it moving. Like moving and moving in and out. Then there's a cutscene. Then the handle of the vice has moved. He does it all the time. Number two is, how hard do you squish it, Del? How hard do you squish it? Are you sure you're not fucking your grinder? In the past you've said loads of them have blown up and died. Could that be because you're doing this? People don't have the same kind of vice, etc., 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 etc. This is... I've gone in the ocean loads of times. Therefore, people who get attacked by sharks are bullshitting. <laughs> you know, you all see these shark attack videos, and it's like, I've been surfing for eight years. Eight years. I go surfing every morning. On this day, on the 13th of February, 1996... I went in the ocean like every other day, and boom, my fucking leg's missing because a shark got me. Yeah. I make sure I use the right other precautions like glasses. Now, the other thing is gloves. A lot of the time, you'll see people, um, they'll put a big ass glove on like that, and then they'll pick up their piece of metal, no. and they'll be grinding away. None of them are doing There's that. a problem with doing that, and that is that. Machines that spin, the power, the torque, the sheer grunt with which that turns is such that if it were to grab hold of the finger of the glove, it will not stop just there and then. It's not a weak power that that turns with. It turns with such Half force. Velocity. Half MV squared. It will drag the glove in and it will chew it up round on the inside. It will jam it in stop, between stop, the cup. It will stop. Exactly how chainsaw trousers work with nylon strands. Now, when that happens, your fingers inside there, and I've seen people on pillar drills use a glove and they've grabbed hold of the chuck when it's still spinning in order to stop it because they're impatient. They want to change the drill bits over or put a, a countersink bit in or something like that, and while it's still turning, the, the drill bit or the, the spinning wheel grabs hold of. That part of the glove, you got it close? Mm -hmm. And it turns it like that. It starts to chew it up and it starts to do that. And then it grabs hold of, and then it will tear that part of the glove. It will just mince that piece of glove and it will chew it away. And then after That's that. That's a drill. That's a grinder. <laughs> and your hands should be nowhere near that. That's what the guard's for. I know you think the guard is just a fucking spark deflector. That's why it's called a spark deflector and not a hand guard. It's literally called a hand guard. It will start chewing through you. And honestly, I've seen the results of an accident where somebody put a glove on, they were on a grinder, there's... I don't believe this one second. I think he's talking shit. I think he's trying to make up a story to give some kind of gravity to what he's saying. Also these, no! bench grinder. What on the, the bench fuck grinder, is that not doing on the bench? Why is it on a fucking shelf? Oh. That's classic in this very video. Loose baggy glove. The thinking behind it is that if I've got a glove on and I touch the wheel with my thumb, it won't rub my skin, so I'm safe. 
Are they right, Ben? Not in a million years. That's what a different right. it's totally different procedure, totally different thing. Just different. It's like, I tell you what, what happens if you, you've got something like this, and this is just a cut, this is nothing you grind, but you're holding it here and you're grinding it there. What happens if you're doing that? Yeah, you're fucking perfectly fine, aren't you, cunt? Grab hold of the glove and it'll drag you into the wheel. And one of these is just as likely no, to not. drag you in no, not. as well. The issue with it is that as that's it does that, that's, the word, it, that's an angle grinder. That's a bench grinder. It has the word grinder in there for you fucked. Coffee grinders. Can't wear gloves anywhere near them. Suck you in. Fucking bell end. It chews it all up and the, the crushing damage, the crushing injury is horrible. I've seen someone tear a massive lump of flesh off the inside of his hand just but with, on a pillar drill, just because a glove got wrapped up in it. If you don't have a glove on and you're doing this with a piece of metal in your it hand, folds your skin in set. Feel, you're grinding away, or you've got that in there and you're grinding away, and it takes it out of your hand, so it takes it out of your hand. That's dangerous because it can throw it across the workshop and into somebody else, or even throw it into you, for instance, which isn't funny. That's why the and whole you've got to be careful because you can't wear glasses because these things can sneak under glasses and get you straight in the face. We've seen that before. I've seen that before. You, you, you were there. The, the whole PPE thing is coming. We're going to do a simple skills on protective equipment later on. But the four-inch grinder is what this is about today. Don't use gloves when you're wearing when you're using your grinder. What I want to talk about is if you're, I think sometimes. If you've got a piece of work and you're holding it down... It literally is. You're for holding anything is that vice. That's what it's for. It's just there to hold lines. That's what it's been... Re it's redundant to now. ...running away. There's always a worry, there's always a worry, that if you come across and you hit yourself with that, that disc, if you've got one of these in, a grinding disc, if it hits your skin and it's got a glove on, it can chew that glove up, drag it into the grinder and then break mm. your finger or worse, just remove it. And, and yes, I've, I know people that's Oh, fucking hell. GE is a car salesman, or it's like going to fucking Curry's or some PC world or something. Oh, my granny's got one on tellies, and my granddad's got that microwave, and my other grandma's got that telly, and my other granddad's got that telly. Well, hang about, they've both got different tellies, have they? Yeah, yeah, they divorced many, many years ago, but they live in the same house. <laughs> However, if you catch yourself, or you catch your skin with a grinder, which I've done a few times, you just get a cut. Because you're so oh, I've never been touched by... Do you know what? I lie. The only thing I've ever been touched by a grinder is wire wheels. Right? The little fuckers they are. Yeah, wire wheels. Because when they spin, you can't really... It's a bit ropey where the edge is. You know what I mean? It's a bit... Meh. Nah. And they've caught me. Just little fucking... Ah, you little cunt. I don't mean them flying out. I mean, literally, the wheels caught me. Uh, or you're doing something and you put it down. You, you've been a bit impatient. It might have caught my leg or something while I'm trying to do that frame for the R5. But I've never been caught by a grinding disc. It doesn't mean it doesn't happen. I'm just saying I've never been caught by one. There's a certain feeling of vulnerability when you've got... I had this thing the other day on the bench holding it and I was grinding. So I have a, I'm feeling straight away, I'm thinking this. So I feel that vulnerability. So I move my hand out of the way. You so you come that say, vice thing. Not to hold the grinder mind, I mean the workpiece. When you're using one of these, it can drag away with this. This is an old Harley Davidson custom, it's not a fucking belt sander. custom foot peg, and all the chrome on it's all bubbling off and buggered, so I'm going to grind a little bit of that off. Oh, look, that works. see, even when you're doing a demo, you're holding the workpiece in a thing called a vice, which is exactly what it's designed to do. And if you have a handle in your in your grinder, then you could do that. Now, some people like, you know, some people, Craig, Craig's a massive fan of doing the whole one hand like this. You know what I mean? He'll grab a grinder and he'll choke the living shit out of it like he's um, alone on a night and he's having fun. But he'll choke the living shit out of it. Um, I generally do or don't it depends it depends what you're trying to do what you're trying to get into sometimes you know you can hold it like this and you know grab the head of it and, like this or whatever um depends what you're doing with it you know i generally take the guard off because i can't fucking see i'm too busy always fucking around with it again depends what i'm doing with it um if i'm going to use the guard or not 
Um, but the handle, I use, I I generally use the handle quite frequently because because I don't use any guards with it because I'm just a badass or an idiot, whichever one you want to say. Um, and I do this at work because now and then there's tensile samples you've got to cut and stuff like that. Um, so I have to go and go and just slice it in two. But I hold the handle and then hold the back end here because it gives me more torque. So when it start, if it does buck a little bit or whatever, just say you're going through something. We have some things where they're two dissimilar metals, so the angle grind will go through one and then hit the other one. And when you hit it, it gives a bit of resistance and a bit of kick. And if you're holding it right far out, they like the big grinds. The big grinds have a fucking handle over here somewhere. I just hold its ass on the blackness. I love grabbing a big girthy bit of black. That's what it's about, really. Um, a trick I learned from... For fuck's sake. A trick I learned from the missus was that. She likes grabbing a bit of girth, black girth specifically. But um, but in all seriousness, yeah, you know, that that's the handle. People... Do you know what? There's a thing that pisses me off, actually. There's a, a hole this side, right, for normal people... There's a spastic hole there for the, you should say spastic hole really, for right left-handed weirdos. But on the Ryobi ones, they have one here. You know, so you can have this at the top. And I love that idea. But it's only the Ryobi ones I've seen that have it, which is a bit of a shame. It's not just a fucking thread. Nice and secure. And all we're going to do is just take the, the sandpaper leaves or flaps okay. on the flap disc. I'm just going to run it really gently, just with its own weight across there and show you how efficient it is at cleaning off all that crappy rusty chrome. The, the chrome hit the rest of it. Oh, and you really, if that is real chrome, you really want to be breathing that in. <laughs> you really do, it's great for you, makes you see things. It's like a free high, and then you get cancer. Look how ripple smooth that is. Whoa! Went a bit off track there, Del. You know what that is? Why you not just hold it flat? Just flat like a robot. Just try and robot it. Robot it. Robot it. Or just backwards and forwards, robot it. Whichever motion is best for you. Don't start fucking rounding corners with it, you stupid cunt. Oh, God. Do it. Look at that. You can literally see the dark edge of how ripple smooth it is. Here we are. Now, obviously, that's not the finished surface. That's the first job. I want to get all the chrome off this, and that's the, wor the worth of a flat disc. It's just took it clean off in a few seconds. So you can't stress enough how useful and how versatile a tool your four-inch grinder is. There really isn't much more I can say to you other than be careful of the way that it bucks when you switch it on. Get used to that. Practice it. Be aware of it, become familiar with it. So if you have two it. hands on it, then the rotation is taken out. You feel it, but you'll feel it. You'll feel it, but it, it's not really a danger in any kind of way because you're holding it correctly. So that when it happens, it's nothing strange to you. First time I gave you one, you <laughs> fired it up and you jumped out of your hand. They are pretty, they are pretty fast. There's only one way of holding it, so it can rotate around that axis, you fucking... God. Bella! Yeah, they've got a life of their own. And obviously, if you know what a gyroscope is, if you remember when you were a kid, you spin a gyroscope and you try and move it, it forces against you. You get that with one of these. You've got that heavy motor spinning inside, plus 90 degrees, plus the blade spinning that side. So effectively, there's quite a lot of gyroscopic force. When you try and move one around, you'll find that it resists your movement. So get used yeah. to it. Get proficient. Practice with your four inch grinder. When you buy the discs, I can't stress enough. Buy the best discs you can. Right, let's find out who these the best ones are from. That'd be good to know. From a reputable um, source. Goodness sake, don't go buying cheap copy Chinese discs from eBay because honestly, yeah, you're taking a risk with your life. Uh, Machine Mart, my favourite tool shop. Made in China. Uh, I bet you. Machine Mart grinding discs. Or some other shithole like um, Portugal. <laughs> Someone who lives in Portugal is going to be well pissed off now. Machine Mart 
grind grinding they're usually from somewhere like morocco or somewhere like that i know i spelled that wrong who cares um machine mark sanding discs let's have a look it's always worth looking up stuff right i do it all the time when someone says oh these are sanding pads sorry i don't want them uh angle grind discs <clears throat> Usually it says country of origin on them. Maximum speed. Imported. Imported from where? Yeah, but imported by Clark International. Right, but imported from where? Usually they do tell you. Uh, you technical specs. Oh, I said view technical specs. Oh, right, I see. Yeah, but where they're made? Where are they made? Where are they made? Can we get a good picture of them? Stock number. No. Usually they tell you. Somewhere. No. Heavy metal cutting disc. It just says imported. Dave expiry blank. <laughs> imported by. Ah, oh, this is a shame. Um, I'm trying to think how I could find out. Masonry cutting discs. They obviously love Clark, don't they? Machine that. What about someone else? Oh, Diamond Edge. Diamond Edge. Uh, yeah, they're not. Diamond discs are a lot better for aluminium, not for steel. Uh, we got any more other brands? No, it's just all clack. That's the only one that's another brand. Um, do we have a technical data sheet anywhere? Clark. Uh, Clark. Grinding discs. Do we have a technical data sheet? MS DS. I don't know if they have an MS. Oh, for fuck's sake, you don't spell it like that, do you? I don't know if they have a material safety data sheets. Oh, they, I was going to say, maybe they do. Who's this for? Oh, this is someone else. Unless these are the suppliers of. Um, let me just tell you what's. Because I know there's a lot of stuff they've got to talk about um, dust. So it's part of your MSD sheets um, because, see Norton, they have a thing telling you something. Um, so Norton would be a good one. I would say they're, they're a, a good abrasive supplier. Uh, I don't even know if this would actually tell you where these discs come from. Uh, but this, you see, this tells you about cutting sizes, stuff like that. You see, stuff, if you ever wanted to read stuff, mono layers, aggregate multi layer non uniform contact area, engineered abrasive multi layered contact areas. These tell you loads of things. Contact wheels, look at this, you see, look, it tells you all sorts. Um, types of angles and overlaps. Ooh. Surface finishes. Um, smoother finish. Grit size, fine. Condition used. Uh, you want a glue one, not a resin, for f smooth surfaces. Uh, low, so RA is the surface roughness. It's like a probe you put on. So that's what the RA reading means. Um, what else we've we got? Wider weed canvas. That's what you'd like. Large diameter. Faster. Um, emery. And the workpiece is harder. You got harder. You get a nice, better finish. 
You see stuff like this, you can just read this shit, right? You can just read this shit and go, oh, yeah, fucking hell. You know what I mean? If you wanted to, I want to polish this up. This tells you just the big, the good man. You always tell a good manufacturer because they have all this stuff. They tell you everything, all of this. But I, I'm not saying they don't, but I wonder if Clark has anything like this. And you could read this and you could learn so much. Just this data sheet. Have a little skim through it. People who want to know how you learn these things. You know, I might even fucking have a, a read through that. Here's a DeWalt one. You know what I mean? Does it say where it's manufactured? Probably fucking not. First aid. Probably not because it changes. Uh, no, it doesn't tell you, does it? It's a shame. But they probably are made in China, to be quite honest, I imagine. Or something like that. Turkey. I just buy flat discs in packs. They come in, which was that, 15 quid? Yeah. About fifteen pound for five discs. They're not expensive. They're worth the money. If you're going to buy, I mean, that diamond disc was about ten pounds. Not expensive, and these come in about two or three quid each. So, honestly, if you're going to do this, don't. You can't spend too much on discs. Get the right quality because if they break up at the speed that that's spinning, bits of it come off everywhere, and quite simply, could be fatal. Big lumps of discs, especially the grinding discs, the heavy metal one. You get a cheap diamond disc and a big lump of that metal breaks off, it's coming out a zillion to miles an hour. Well, you don't need to know anything here. And as for these heavy stone erosion discs, it big erosion. lumps of stone coming out of that at a thousand miles an hour, honestly, it's worse than a shotgun going off in front of you. You know, it's like yeah, shrapnel. It's, so be it's not. I'd much rather yeah. just explode because I've got all my kit on than someone come at me with a shotgun. Oh. Practice with it and enjoy it because a four inch grinder is one of the best tools you'll ever buy. Buy the best one you can afford, practice with it, get a load of scrap metal and go and destroy it. It's actually quite good fun, isn't it? Another little thing you can invest in, which I haven't put on for this, is some earplugs. So get yourself some Amplivox or get some earplugs at least. You can stick some cotton wool in your ears, whatever, because that noise is quite serious when it starts screaming its way through metal. Uh, and check with your neighbours because it can. You see how he's more bothered about the health and safety of earplugs, which is fair enough. You know, that's a, a valid point, you know, ear protection. But sticks a grinder in his vice going, well, I've done it, now it's happened to me. I could say, I've I've listened to something really loud. My head didn't explode, therefore, fuck earplugs. Why is everyone such a pussy kind of thing? Here we are. Anything else, Ben? No, thank you. I think you. that really covers it. It's very difficult to make this one. I've probably said a little bit too much, probably waffled on a bit too long, but I just wanted to cover taking the discs on and off. If you've got any questions, drop them in the comments box. Always happy That's to advise. Um, buy the best one you can and practice, practice, practice. You cannot spend too much time getting familiar with your grinder so that you know what it does and you know what it's capable of and how badly it can hurt you if you get careless with it. That's enough, don't you? Okay, there we are. Simple skills, four inch grinder. Go and practice and enjoy your skills. Take easy ride safe. See you next time. What a load of nonsense. Wow, that conversation was amazing. Um, some things that he didn't uh, talk about, which is getting, uh, especially uh, erosion discs. Oh, I've got it to hand that I can see in reach. You know, erosion discs, these kind of fibre discs. Right, reinforced abrasives. That's what these things are. Yeah, these things. Right, don't get them wet. Don't get oil in them. Oil's a big one as well. Um, try and keep them in somewhere that you can keep dry. You know, quite dry. In that cardboard box, as long as you can keep that cardboard box dry, good place to keep them in the boxes, stuff like that. Oh, that makes sense. Oh, you can get you get little sashes of silicon gel that you get from your, you know, your missus has in her handbag. Uh, when you turn the oven off at night or whatever, you know, you've done your tea, whatever, you turn your oven off, let it cool a bit or whatever, and then chuck those packets in. That'll just help dry those packets out because you don't know how long they've been in that fucking handbag for. And then get them silicon gel packets, put them in that box with them. It just takes a bit of the moisture and all the rest of it. Hope that makes sense, and I'll see you in a bit.